Hello to everyone watching this footage. It's Leviathan here again. And to start things off, I'm going to introduce myself to newcomers. I'm born high-functioning autistic, I'm obsessed with fiction, and I'm planning to make my own creative universe like the late Stanley did. I figured that I have to make this video right now, because in the next 48 hours, I will attempt to get an interview so that way I could get some kind of short-term occupation working at McDonald's. And I hope it's a wise option in terms of the kind of progress I would like for my creations here to go through with, you know? So, um, for this video, I'll introduce two hero characters and one creature. So, if you guys could bear with me as I describe each of them to you, I'll try my best to make things work. Here's the first one. Zerpent. Real name, Sarah Marikami. Height and weight, fairy. Status, hero in Goddess of Reptiles. Base, Asclimbius, mobile. Intelligence, three brains. Behavior, caring and protective. She'll do anything to care for her daughter. Lethality, only when threatened or during a fight. Weaknesses, her love for her daughter. Powers, she has a long serpentine tail. Most known reptilian capabilities, immortality, can control any reptile, and has mass alteration. Eyes, bright green, hair, brownish black, and waist length. Origin. After learning about the death of Kaijericus' mother, Goddess decided to cheer up the hero by reincarnating Sarah Marikami as the serpentine goddess of reptiles while also being known as simply Zerpent, with a Z. One day, Goddess transported Kaijericus to Asgolympius, where she was reunited with her mother after all those years. Eventually, Space Kaijericus appeared to destroy the Alpha Gods, until being defeated by both Kaijericus and Zerpent. Since then, the newly recruited Zerpent would spend some of her time helping her daughter with objectives. Costume? She wears a reptilian-style robe. Games? Solitary. With the Alpha Gods and other heroes. Orgel Inspiration? Reptiles and Reincarnation. The next one I'm going to introduce is one that's been active for centuries in multiple different forms of media. And this is going to be basically the Leviathan universe equivalent of that legendary storyline and such, which I think you have an understanding of that by now. So, hope you uh, enjoy hearing this version of the story and such. Alice One. Real name? Allison Hatterson I. Height and weight varied. Status hero and creator and true ruler of Wonderland. Base, Wonderland, Mobile. Intelligence, Three Brains. Behavior, Witty and Willful. She'll do anything to protect her kingdom. Lethality, Only by accident or during a fight. Weaknesses, Low Awareness, Being Rivaled, and Curiosity. Powers, She could alter her mass by eating or drinking something. Has martial arts. Is unable to age and is a skilled master at warfare. She wields a Vorpal Blade that's powerful enough to kill almost any opponent. She also has some uncanny reasoning skills. Eyes, bright blue. Hair, bright yellow and flowing. Origin. During the 17th century AD, Alison Hatterson inadvertently created her destined kingdom of Wonderland when she fell down the rabbit hole and never had any chance to return. Alice later gained her destined powers from the White Queen when helping to destroy the Red Queen, and the two became close friends since. However, when the Red Queen finally murdered the White Queen, Alice One got so shattered that due to her size at the time, she created the Lake of Tears with a single drop. When Alice One finally murdered the Red Queen out of cold blood, 
she traumatized a recently transported little girl, who became the Black Queen, leading to her eventually slaying Alice One with her own weapon. By the present day, the Master used her occasionally functional Resurrector to bring Alice One back to life, and she would nowadays do anything to get her payback on the Black Queen for the disaster she made. Costume. She normally wears her trademark dress. Teams. Solitary, with her descendants and other heroes. Original inspiration, herself. I hope that's a decent one for you guys. And here's the last one, which is a creature above all else. So I hope you guys could uh, do as much as you can, if that makes sense. Just bear with me. Eric Wattless. Real name, inapplicable. Height, 35 feet. Weight, 3 tons. Status, villain, and creation of Dr. Scream. Base, mobile. Intelligence, free brains. Behavior, savage, sneaky, and craving. It'll always try to cure its hunger. Lethality, utterly devastating on land, air, and sea. Weaknesses, being rivaled, explosives, and stab wounds. Powers. It has the head, fins, and tail of a barracuda, and the body of a Quetzalcoatlus, which is like a pterodactyl, but way bigger. It's a fast flyer and swimmer, possesses sharp claws and teeth, and is highly unpredictable. It could also travel in flocks of around 35 to 75 members. Eyes deep green, hair none. Origin. One time. Dr. Scream decided to make a creature that is horrific on land, in the air, and in the oceans, and eventually she created the horrendous Baraquatalus. After making an entire flock of them, she commanded Baraquatali, the Baraquatali, to attack in Sydney and feast on the natives. However, after a time of chaos, the hybrid Dracornids started acting up by fighting against the Baraquatali until there was barely any survivors. Just so you know, a Dracornet is a biological hybrid between a dragon and a hornet. Annoyed by this event, Dr. Scream decided to take a break from the Baraquatali to use her other creations for future missions. Costume, none. Teams, solitary, in flocks, or others. Original inspiration, the Terracuda. Well, those are the three things I'm going to introduce to you guys, and uh, I hope you don't mind. And uh, if you have any, like, I hope you guys have a, had a decent Valentine's Day and a fine rest of the month and such. And if you guys want, you could like, subscribe, and comment down below. It's your choice. You know how it is. And if you have any more questions, you could just go through with it as much as you can, if that makes any sense. And I hope that... Working at McDonald's wouldn't negatively affect my chances, because I do know about the butterfly effect, and I hope it doesn't affect whether or not I would be employed for better things on behalf of my creations. You know? So, thank you for everyone for watching, and hope you guys have a fine rest of the month and so forth, and until next time, and transmission.